What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to bring you another video on the Cat Eye Chevy project. We're going to do a mod on it here in a minute. But first I just wanted to say thank you so very much to each and every one of you that has subscribed already. I've still got a lot of people on the channel who have been watching who haven't subscribed. Maybe you haven't noticed yet that you haven't subscribed and thought that you had. So maybe take a look at that, but we're almost a 500 subscribers already, and I've only been pushing this channel hard this year. So to begin the year, I only had about 100. So we've grown a lot, and I'm looking forward to still growing a lot more into the new year. So we're, I think we're at 497 subscribers at the time of shooting this video. So thank you all so very much again, please, on this video. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you ring that notifications bell. And then also, please like the video. It really does help. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all's support. Now, let's go over to the Cat Eye Chevy. And let's go take a look at this free mod. Essentially, a free mod that is very cheap, simple. Any of y'all can do it. So, let's go take a look real quick. All right. So, we're out here at the truck now, as you can see. And to get started and show you what we're gonna do, we've gotta remove the air intake tube. All right. So we're gonna take that loose. And then also right here is a little, I call them Christmas tree spot where the radiator hose is pushed into the air intake piece right down here. Right here, coming off the throttle body, and you got a hose right here coming to it. This hose coming to it runs along over to here and connects down to the radiator. This end over here connects to the steam port right over here. So basically you just got a clamp on the hose where it's being held this direction on the bottom of the throttle body and same going this way. So what we have is hot coolant running through the throttle body. So let's first talk about why we would not want that. We do not want our throttle body to be as hot as coolant temperature over 200 degrees, 205, maybe even 210 on a vehicle like this with it being a stock thermostat. There's just no reason why we want to heat up the incoming air as it goes through a hot throttle body. It just makes no sense. No reason to do it. Now, maybe for the factory, maybe for GM to heat this up, trying to get the vehicle up to operating temps, that might have made sense for them. But for performance and for what we need to do with the truck, it just doesn't make any sense. So what you can essentially do is two things. You can either one, take it off here on this side of the straw body, which we're gonna do in a minute. And then you could reconnect that over here to the steam port because this hose is really long and even S's up here. Or you can take a quarter inch barb fitting and you can just press the hose ends onto it right there. And it'll just stay right beneath the throttle body, but it won't be running coolant through the throttle body no more because now they're bypassed and just joined up together. It hurts absolutely nothing. Obviously, this is going to be a free mod if you're going to hook this up to the steam port. Otherwise, if we are going to use this, this cost at ABC Auto. So as you can see, the hose mender is what they call it. Cost a dollar and eighty cents. And then also I got two hose clamps. Two hose clamps, dollar fifty-six. So three dollars and sixty-four cents. If you want to do a barb fitting and two hose clamps to hold it on. So, and I'm doing all this talking without this off of the truck because as soon as this comes off the truck, we're going to get just a little bit of coolant here. So we'll take it off of the truck 
I'm going to install the barb fitting just because it's easiest for now. And I'll see how tight it is. If I need the hose clamps or feel it gives me a better seal, I'll just use those. So for this, you may use a pair of channel locks or even just a pair of pliers, whatever gets in there better. Literally all you need is a pair of channel locks or pliers and a straight blade screwdriver to do this. Super duper simple. All right, so now you can see there's the one hose clamp that I loosened up from this side of the throttle body and then you can see the other hose clamp that I loosened up. You can get a little rag and put down here like I'm going to do and catch the coolant obviously when it comes off of here and soak it up. So now where it is pressed onto the throttle body just take your screwdriver and push back on the hose to get it off. Here's a good look at where the hoses are onto the throttle body. This right here is the metal part of the throttle body and then you can see the hoses are just pressed on. So we're just gonna push those hoses out and this right here is where the barb fitting is going to take the place up. All right, so now we've got them off of there. Here's the one hose that was on this side. There's the hose that was on the other side. As you can see, they've been on there for a while. There's some corrosion back here where they were slid on at. So it takes a little bit to get them to be unstuck, you know, from the rubber being on those fittings. But once you get them loose and push them off, then it'll be just fine. It'll slide on off of there from there. So it actually didn't lose as much as I thought. I've done this before on F bodies, like a 1998 to 2002 LS1 F body. Those have coolant run through there, and they claim that this mod on an F body, they claim that it gave them about seven to eight rear wheel horsepower actually. Now on this vehicle, I don't think it'd be the same case. On an F body, you've got a over the radiator style intake. So your mass airflow sensor is sitting about right in here. Your throttle body obviously is right here. So maybe if it's hot and really affects that airflow, then maybe it would actually take and raise your temperature near the intake air temperature sensor. For those that don't know and have never seen in a tune, if your intake air temperature sensor gets warm and sees a warm temperature, it starts pulling timing. So that starts at 86 degrees on most GM vehicles. And when it starts pulling timing, obviously you're losing horsepower. So if this heat is near the IAT sensor, then I could see it making a bigger difference. On this, we've got plastic intake, plastic intake manifold and intake boot. And then our IAT sensor is clear out here by the air filter. So this might not necessarily raise a horsepower like on an F body or at least not as much. But at the same time, my thought process goes to thinking about this uh, throttle body control module that controls this electronically. I don't want, you know, any of these sensors seeing more heat and more temperature than they need to. To me, that would just make them not last as long. So, we're gonna finish this up now. Gonna hook up that barb fitting. All right, so now our barb fitting is installed. I put the steam port side on first because it is the shorter hose. So it just works out easier to get that one on first and then put on this side. And also while you're here, we can wipe up and clean up the throttle body. Be gentle with it. Don't use any heavy cleaners on it. And then while you're doing this, go ahead and help yourself out and free up the hose running to it. Take it out of, there's a little holder right here. So take it out of that one while you're doing it. And then also this clip right here. And make sure when you put it in, it has to be on the back side of the throttle body 
and the coolant hose because it won't fit through this real tight spot. So put it through here, push it on, tighten it on up, and you'll be good to go. So now I'm just gonna wipe off that throttle body, throw this air intake back on. All right, so the intake is back on. Make sure you got it on nice and tight. Make sure your band clamp is tight. Make sure you got it installed completely. Make sure you get this little Christmas tree piece slid back in there. And that's it, job complete. No more hot throttle body. Nothing heating up the airflow as it's coming into the truck. So that's it. One other thing I did that y'all haven't seen, I painted the lower grill, the top grill, and the bow tie. I'll close the suit so y'all can get an idea. But basically, I, I figure some projects on this truck, they might not all make good, you know, YouTube TV, YouTube content for y'all. So some things I'm just going to go ahead and do, and I might just show you on camera, and this is one of them. So I just taped off all around here by the chrome, taped off in here, the top and bottom pieces. The bow tie actually comes off. Two studs are on the back of the bow tie in the back. So you just take off those two nuts and then go ahead and clean it up, spray paint it. And to me, the gloss black really makes a big difference on it. Normally, that grill was this dingy or plastic. So the gloss black really freshens it up in my opinion. But anyways, it's not super exciting, but it makes a difference. So if nothing else, I also am trying to get y'all excited about go out there and customize y'all's vehicle. Find something to do, something to make it your own, something that just gives a little personality, you know, and some more performance. So lots more coming for this truck. And I appreciate y'all for watching. Get out there, have some fun, do some modding, and I'll catch y'all in the next video.